Okay, welcome to a tutorial on constructors in Dart. Um, so this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial, but coming from other languages, the constructors in Dart might be a little bit weird with the different things that you can do, because there's multiple different ways to make uh, optional parameters. Uh, you can have named parameters, and you can have named constructors. And all of this plays into null safety as well, depending on whether you need to initialize a value or not. Uh, so let's get into it. I got this class user here, and we're just going to put some values in it and look at constructors. So the first thing that you need to know about Dart is that by default, all classes have a constructor uh, if you don't put anything at all. So if we just go final user equals user, you can see that we actually have a constructor. And other languages don't necessarily do this, like C Sharp, um, but you get one in inherently. Uh, so let's put some values here. So let's put something final. So let's put final, um, final string name. So when we put a final string name, uh, this is not nullable. It does not have a question mark. Final variables must be initialized. Uh, so when they say try initializing the, initializing the variable, what they mean is add a constructor. Uh, so what we can do is use a hotkey here to add in a constructor. We're going to press Alt Enter, and then that's going to open up this context member uh, menu in IntelliJ. And what we can do is just click Create Constructor for Final Fields. And this gives us uh, one of the most uh, basic constructors. So this is a positional argument and it is absolutely required that you put it in. And you can see it's required because we've got a compile error up here. So let's put in a name there. So what that's going to do is put you know, this value name into this variable name here. And since it's final, it can never get reset. So let's look at one um, that is optional. So let's say that we uh, don't necessarily have an email for every user. Let's make it nullable. Let's still make it final, though. So now, this is still final. Uh, and it's nullable. So because it's final, we still need to initialize that because um, we need to initialize it either something up here that's valid or we need to put it in the constructor. So let's put it in the constructor and we go this.email. Now because this is a positional argument, this no longer compiles because now we expect two arguments. So we could put something in here, but now since this is uh, nullable, we could put null in there. This user does not have an email. So let's now take a look at um, optional uh, and named inputs to a constructor. So one thing that we can do is wrap a section of our constructor with curly brackets. And I like to put a trailing comma here because the Dart formatter makes it look pretty nice. So now we're going to see something interesting. So this still compiles, uh, even though that we got this uh, email here in our constructor. And the stuff inside of the curly brackets are named inputs. And you see this a lot in widgets. The vast, vast majority of inputs to widgets are named. So if we want to use that, now we can put email. And when we start typing E, we get the name of that here. So we can go you know, something email. Now, uh, we can't uh, just put it as a positional. It has to have that name there. So because it's nullable, we don't need to pass it in. And we also don't need to give it a default value. But let's take a look now at what happens if it's not nullable. So now we're going to get a compile error down here because email can't be null. So we have two options. One of the options is to give it a default value. So default, right? So this is going to be the value of this user's email because it's uh, the default value in the constructor. But we could still overwrite that with something. So if we type something here, this is going to be put in instead of that default value. Let's say instead of putting the default value, we do something uh, with the required keyword. So the required keyword is a new keyword. And we can put it in front of our parameter here. And now this is a required input. So when you consume it, you have to put in a value, uh, but you don't have a default value here anymore. So let's look at what happens here. So we now we say email is required, but there's no corresponding argument. So it's still named, uh, but it is required. So if we press Alt Enter there, it's going to say Enter it in, and then we can enter it in there. So let's add a couple more named ones. So. Um, I don't know, email two. Okay, so now we have two of these guys and they're both named and named parameters, the order doesn't matter that you put them in. So we can see here we have now our email two. It is completely valid to swap the order of those guys. And one of the reasons that this is really useful is sometimes widgets have an obscene amount of different things that can be passed in. And if you had to put the exact order of 20 different inputs, it would be quite annoying. Uh, of course, with named ones as well, if one of them has a default value, uh, then that could be omitted. So um, 
you know, there could actually be three named things, but we could just put two of them in as long as we make put in all of the ones that are required. Uh, so let's make one of these nullable just as, a, as another example. So this email too is now nullable, but it's still required. And the idea of required or not and null or not are subtly different. So even though it's nullable, it's still required. So for the first email, let's put them in the same, in the order of one, two again, just to keep them the same order. This one, this one cannot be null because email is not nullable, but the email two is. So we can put null here. Now, even though it's nullable, it's still required, which means if I don't pass in email, that is actually a compile error. So when you say something is required, the uh, consumer of that constructor has to say, yes, this is null. Even if it's uh, nullable, you gotta say, yes, this is null. So we can do that just by putting email two there as null. And we can see that in um, examples from the material library. One of them is with all of the buttons. So if we add in a text button here, the text button is gonna tell us, you need to put child and also you need to put on pressed. So let's do that. Okie doke. So child, we're seeing it cannot be null. So let's put, you know, usually you put a text, okay. And that should be const. And on pressed is has this similar thing. So we can see that the in here, it's a void function that's nullable, right? So it is completely valid to pass in null here. Um, and now it can all be const, but that's why it's linting. But what's not valid, even though it's nullable, is to not put anything at all, because you have to put on pressed, no matter what it is, whether it's null or if it's actually a function. Okay, so next up, let's look at something similar, but instead of curly brackets, we are going to look at square brackets. So you can't use square brackets and curly brackets at the same time. And these, instead of being named, are now positional and optional. So all of the ones at the start are all um, required and they have to be there in a row and the number of arguments has to match. And now here, what we have is you can't use um, the required keyword in there anymore, by the way. And that takes away the named part of this. So what we can do is make a constructor where you could put one argument or you could put two or you could put three. Um, but if you keep adding arguments, you have to go in the order that are the ones that are in the square brackets. So what we can see here is that we have a compile error because we're not allowed to say that required keyword in here anymore. So we do have to put a default value in here. Um, so one thing that we could do is just you know hard code a string there. And then this is gonna be the default value of this uh, field, but this one is nullable. So it doesn't have need to have a default value. Uh, you could put a default value if you wanted to, uh, but with a nullable variable, that might not make as much sense because then why is it nullable at all? Okay, so let's look at consuming this constructor up here. So we have our user and it's completely valid to just give it a name because uh, we give it a name, but it's not valid to not give it a name because the name is still a required argument here. So we give it the name. Then we're also allowed to give it the second argument and the second argument is not nullable. And then the third argument, we could give it if we want or we could not. So if we don't give it, what's gonna happen is email two is gonna be null because we didn't put it. And we're allowed to put a string in there. Whoop, not like that though. And that's gonna be the third uh, argument and it's the second one in the list of square brackets that is optional. Uh, we are also allowed if we wanted to, however, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense is to just put null here um, because that would initialize this with null and it's already null. So, you know, that doesn't, that's a little bit uh, useless because that's the same as this. So it's a little less code. Okay, so that covers how the syntax of a constructor actually works. Let's now look at named constructors. So you can name your constructors by putting a name here. So you're gonna put user dot, um, I don't know, new user, right? You can obviously name it whatever you want. So when you have a named constructor, you no longer have this default unnamed constructor that takes it away. So if you wanted there still to be this default constructor, now you would need to make yourself a unnamed constructor and then fill in the values here. So we can go this dot name, this dot, <coughs> email, and then how about this one is optional. Okay, great. So now we have two constructors. We have this one, which is unnamed, or we can go user dot new user, and then call our other one. And while these are a little bit different 
um, in how I put the brackets, it turns out that both of them, just putting these two strings in a row works because these two are here and then it's basically putting the name and email into there. Okay, so we've looked at the final uh, variables mostly. Um, now you're gonna run into something uh, in Dart where let's say you need to calculate something and then you wanna put it in a final variable. Uh, that can come up. So let's say hypothetically, let's make a constructor. And let's say that my new user constructor, we want to take this.name and this.email. Oh, let's make it just this.name. And for now, let's get rid of this guy. Okay, so this is going to have a compile error. And it's going to say, hey, email is not initialized. And you have to initialize it. And if you're new to Dart, you might try to do something like this.email is equal to something. Right, because this is kind of how it works in some other languages. And you're gonna see that none of this compiles. This is not valid dark code. So you need to put it all in the round brackets. But what if you don't want to? What if you wanna calculate something and then put it in there in the constructor? Well, in order to do that, we need to use a different keyword and that keyword is factory. So factory constructors, and well, this wasn't gonna work for the time being, basically allow you to do something and then return a value with, uh, within there as a constructor. So this, this is like you can do some uh, calculation type stuff. So let's make another constructor that we're gonna ultimately call and we are going to name it dot internal. <clears throat> so just like variables, constructors are private if you start their name with an underscore, so you can make a private constructor in that way. So let's say this, this is our constructor that actually initializes everything. But let's say we want to make a new user and all we wanna do is give it a name. Now, with only the name, we're not going to be able to call this constructor because we need an email. So let's just say, you know, you did some work in your constructor and now you got a value and you want to pass it into email. Or how are you going to do that? So let's just say, uh, okay, so we got our email. <clears throat> oh, that can be const. Not bad. Okay, so we got our email. Well, what we can do now is actually return our internal constructor. So let's return that. So when we invoke this, we're going to put in, we can pass in the name that this guy's getting, and then we can put the e email right there, right? So what we're doing is that the consumers of this class, like the public, um, can only use this factory constructor, factory user dot new user. And what they're gonna do is put in that name. And then for every single one, they're all gonna have the same email. So this maybe is not the best example, but the point is, is that you can initialize value and do work inside of a factory constructor and then forward that basically to a different constructor um, if you need to do something to get one of these values when it's final. That's how you can do that. And the reason that this is really good is because I feel like this is an awful lot better than making this just not final. Because if this is not final and this is public, well then anything else in your app can modify this value. And that's not necessarily the most like solid you know, architecture for your code. It's just having public variables that, <clears throat> excuse me, anything can modify. Of course, this would work if you then go um, email is assigned our default value there this this guy right <clears throat> this does work if you want to do something in your constructor and calculate something but the problem is is that up in main let's make a user um, and let's name them name right you dot email is now public and it's not final so we can just change it to anything Right, and that's not necessarily something that you want to happen. Like if this is like a data transfer object, like a model, you probably want everything to be final. And now you can't modify it from outside the class, which is usually a good thing. And now this no longer compiles, we can't do this. So we're gonna change that back to a semicolon. Oh, you know what, I might've missed that. If you want a constructor to do something inside of it, you can put curly brackets. And then if you want the constructor to, if it doesn't need to do anything other than going this dot, this dot, you can just end it with a semicolon instead. Okay, so we've covered factory constructors now and the normal constructors of one class. Well, what happens with inheritance? What if there is a super constructor that we need to call? So let's make a base class for this. Um, um, and let's just move name into there. And let's make this abstract. Oops. And let's extend user base 
and let's just start over. How about that? Okay, so even though you can't instantiate user base, it's abstract, you still need a constructor because the classes that inherit from this are going to need to be able to initialize this name field. So let's just make this simpler. Let's just put the default constructor, one argument that you have to put. So user is not compiling for two different reasons. First off, uh, user base needs its name. The second thing it's not compiling for is because email needs to be initialized. So I bet you if we just put alt enter, it's, oh no, it didn't know about the super. Okay, so here we have our constructor and this is going to work and compile. So what we do is we use the colon to separate this class's constructor from the super class's constructor, which is, it actually highlights it for me, it's right up here. Right, so we're putting AA into name and we're putting whatever we enter in uh, when we create a user into email. Now let's say hypothetically we want both of those inputs. Uh, so if we go up here and we go final u equals user, you can see that we have no way to actually input a name yet. So how do we get a name when we make a user to ultimately get into this base class? Well, what we can do is just put a type here. So we can put string name and then we can put name into the super constructor. So now this is a second argument in a row of the, just the default arguments. So this is no longer compiling. So let's put name. So now name from here is this variable which gets put into the super constructor and goes into here. So now uh, u.name is gonna be that name that we put in there. Okay, so one thing that's pointing out is that this dot name, you cannot, whoop, this, this isn't valid. You can't do this. Uh, it's not a field in the enclosing class. It's a field in the base class up here, right? So this, this doesn't work. Uh, you do need to just put string name. Now you could do the same thing as always and put these uh, curly brackets in here, but this isn't gonna compile. And the reason it's not gonna compile is because this is not nullable. So it needs a default value. Um, so let's put a default value name. Okay, so now that it's a named parameter, you can see that we need to put a name up here and invoke that properly like that. So you can see you can combine the super and the uh, you know curly brackets and the square brackets in uh, a lot of different ways. Um, let's look at the Hello World project just to see some examples and some widgets of how this is you know usually going to work. So let's look at the constructor of Material App. So you can see Material App every single argument is actually uh, a named argument. And, oh, sorry, got a little confused. So we can see key, navigator key, all these different things. So with so, 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 so many different inputs, it makes a lot of sense to use named parameters and make lots of different things optional. Because when we look in here, uh, it would be quite annoying if, you know, if I wanted checkerboard something, something, right? If I had to put that above title, that would just be really annoying. So it's just very convenient for widgets who have a lot of inputs to be able to put that at the top or bottom. So material app, interestingly, does not require anything whatsoever, um, which is about a bit interesting, but let's find one that does require something. So I bet you, does theme data require something? Nope. Okay, well the example homepage does. So the example homepage requires a title, right? So we can't invoke that without the title. And we can see that's required. And all of the uh, inputs are, are positional and, sorry, not positional, they are named. It does also have that super constructor to key. Okay, well, I think that about covers it for constructors. We went over uh, just the normal constructor, default constructors, named ones, uh, the required keyword, the square brackets for positional ones, and then also super constructors. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I hope that clears things up if you're coming from a, a different language and using Dart.